Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. Once again, my name is TJ and I am joined by Lothar. Lothar, what did you think of that, that last match? It was a 3-0 in favor of Shiny Pants. It was interesting. Although it was 3-0, it was kind of quick. It was still an interesting matchup between those decks. Like uh, we, From one side we have seen you know, the Murloc Paladin, which is a, I would say, completely non-conservative uh, yeah. uh, deck to, to um, play in a tournament and always a pleasure to watch, but it didn't hold up to those already established decks, yep. right? So Secret Paladin, a Baton Warrior, and a Zoo. But it was interesting to watch. Yeah, definitely a bold choice, to yeah. say the least. But once again, guys, we're live here from the Bunk Hostel in Singapore. Uh, where you know the the players have have gathered. They're also staying here, which is it's really cool. It's sort of like a fireside gathering esque uh, type tournament where the the players are actually staying in the hostel and, and playing here. So uh, we're down to 64 players, and we're gonna move into the next match of the winners bracket round of 32, which is Handsome Guy versus Tan Soku. Yep, and Handsome Guy is on a maybe not winning streak, but on a streak because he just finished second at the uh, Asia Pacific Winter Championships. Yeah. So um, he won $15,000 and some points. So he already... <laughs> Lots of points. Lots of points, yeah. yeah. So he already is, uh, is qualified for the next qualifier, yeah. um, so, so to speak. Uh, and I'm sure that he wants to win this event as well. Yeah. And Handsome Guy actually originally qualified for the 2016 Winter uh, APAC Championship because he was the highest point earner uh, in all of the Asia Pacific region, so he w he didn't just win the uh, the Korean qualifier; he was the highest point earner, which gave him that spot. So, definitely racking up those points. And Tansoku, of course, the Japanese player, uh, not too much known about him. Yeah, we didn't actually had a chance to talk with him to see any accomplishments yet, and we couldn't Google it. So, mm -hmm. quite a new face to us. Uh, but he seems like a good uh, Druid player. He drew uh, the Wild Grove. <laughs> Druid in a nutshell. Yeah, but. The opening hand with uh, Force of Nature Savage Roar is not the best, but what a god, he just drew the pile to Shredder. Yeah. So th this is where the uh, the true spirit of the Druid comes out. When you have combo in your hand and you need to piece together enough damage to get there. Mm -hmm. And we'll wow. see, that's a good draw for after the pile to Shredder, so he's making those pieces. Yeah, but look at that. Handsome guy is a beast of hell with on his own. Yeah. Dark Peddler into the PO and an Ubernick as well on turn two, so there's a uh, there's a PO on turn three to be played, which is awesome. Yeah, these players have probably played enough of this matchup on ladder, uh, where they are playing incredibly quickly, and uh, no surprise because this is one of the uh, most popular matchups, uh, or most maybe not most popular, most frequent matchups mm -hmm. on ladder and in tournaments for Hearthstone right now. Yep, agree, and. Also a good catch from Handsome Guy to use the, pilot, uh, the PO that he got from the draw, mm -hmm. not the one from the Dark Paddler, because your opponent will be still thinking, okay, what does he have from the Paddler, right? Yeah. You, so you, you keep your opponent in some uncertain, uncertain uh, situation when he's not uh, able to predict what might be the outcome uh, in the next draw, for example, on the next turn. And now there's a decision from Handsome Guy to be made, do I trade or do I not trade? And you have to assume, well, does my opponent have an easy way to get advantage from that spell power? Yeah. Uh, also, deciding whether or not he wanted to play the Void Walker or not instead of floating that mana. Uh, so, uh, decides to just leave it alone. And leaving that spell power up against Druid is dangerous. Even though he probably wouldn't have been too sad to see a swipe last turn because it would have mean he was playing off curve. Yep. It would have, like, given away a lot of his... He still would have had initiative, but it would have given away a lot of his board, so... Hmm. End gang boss, abusive search, and trade. If you play imp gang boss, abusive search, and then just go face for six damage, then you are being really weak to swipe. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't advise to do that. I think you're weak to swipe regardless, though. Well, but at least your opponent doesn't have to load up anymore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I do. I do agree. Hmm. I do agree. So not, not an easy turn, but I would say probably trading is the correct decision this turn, and of course playing the Invincible Boss. He goes for the Voidwalker instead, so he doesn't play around Wrath. Probably correct decision because there was no situation when the Wrath could have been 
used effectively, but now the Azure Drake living roots for free damage and you can kill off the 4-4 four four with the low tip if you want to. And then you can combo next turn. Uh, that, that's what I was thinking, maybe you should go and damage the face yeah. instead. Exactly. Upstairs, as some oh. magic players are, are saying usually. Taking it upstairs. The double living roots. Does it change anything? It doesn't Does it change anything this turn. But living roots is a very versatile card in this matchup especially. It helps you pick off annoying things like a knife juggler that you can't get to with your minions. Oh, or wow. Oh. Okay. okay, I wasn't suspecting that at all. I actually like this. This actually protects... Uh, Town Soaker's board actually really well because he's got two threatening creatures on the board. Mm -hmm. So there's absolutely mm -hmm. no way that Handsome Guy can clear off both unless he gets a really solid implosion roll and has an abusive sergeant, which he does have both of those things. Hmm. The hard part is rolling that four. I was just thinking, if you just go phase, you l use the living roots to kill the Void Walker, you deal five damage to the phase, your opponent is at 23, and you have 16 in your hand. Over, over to 17 over curls of uh, two yeah. turns, right? Ooh. Ooh. That's not good. Yikes. But in the end, it all works out because Tansoku gets to keep his low deb and get in for the three damage anyway. Big game hunter, though. It's not what you want to see. It is going to be able to take out a Dr. Boom, perhaps, if it's in the Zoo Warlock deck, or um, a Sea Giant, if Handsome Guy runs the Sea Giant version, which. With the Enhancer Meccano, maybe he does. Interesting decision to use the Force of Nature when you know that you have the access uh, <coughs> to the combo in turn 9. Yeah. Hmm. I would rather think about just the Big Game Hunter and Hero Power instead. Just get, you know, bodies on the board, you clear up the uh, Abusive Sergeant, you deal 5 damage to the face. And then your opponent has to either kill the low dev or the big game hunter, so you're left with the 4-2 anyway. Yeah. Could be afraid of a handsome guy dropping a big threat this turn and not having an answer to do with it like a sea giant, but uh, sort of unlikely that he uh, he could have used Force of Nature to clear it off in an emergency anyway. So. Yeah, but at this point you don't have access on... Oh, <laughs> never mind. Don't have access. <laughs> yeah, that was like he's... His hand was basically lacking any kind of threats, yeah. right? So this Dr. Boom saves him from this unfortunate situation, but he probably wouldn't be in that spot if he wouldn't uh, just play the force of nature, Yeah. right? <laughs> Kappa Kappa. I, I've never seen someone play Druid so effectively. <laughs> well, you didn't uh, then watch a lot of uh, Life Coach yeah. in tournaments. <laughs> When he was like double innervating into Wild Grove on turn uh, one, yeah. and then just top decking but almost always. But how does Life Coach turn. utilize emotes? You can have the perfect amount. Not too many. Not too little. Ooh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate for Handsome Guy changed a lot when it comes to the decisions that he ha yeah. that he needs to make now. Seems the good. That was the Dormok, the Gormok, the Impaler. Available this turn. Yeah. If that knife jug would have still been alive. All right. Well, he needs taunts here to oh, stay alive. Wow. And I'd say that's a taunt. Three, in fact. Three taunts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, those in cancel mechanos are just crazy in this turn. That's the second match. They're very taunt heavy today. That's that's for sure. He can still push a lot of... Well, no, because he, he, he can still push the Dr. Boom through, the Dr. Boom damage to the face, so... Um, he is still going to be able to pressure, but it will give Handsome Guy maybe a small opening if this Boom Bot isn't too angry hmm. to climb the way back, because I don't think if he does throw that Dr. Boom to face, he can clear the whole board. Let's see. Let's see. Fall damage to the face. So... Both of the boom bots actually dealt four damage. Yeah. Yeah. Boom bots are deadly. Tansuko is on point here. And Handsome Guy picks up the low theb. Not what he wants to see. And in order to just stay alive here, Handsome Guy has to use the Doom Guard and throw it in. And that's the, the worst boom. possible scenario. 
Well, tap basically doesn't change anything. Yeah. But using the Doomguard would be like a losing play anyway. Because you yeah. need to trade the Doomguard and another minion to so just leave a 1 1 minion on board. Yeah. And then your opponent still has access to his cards, still has access to his hero power, just to damage you one damage per turn, and you sacrificed a Golmog and a Lotif from hand because you couldn't fit those yep. in the same turn. So a horrible decision to make from uh, for a handsome guy, and there was no way out, Yeah, basically. No way out, indeed. But, you know, that is Tansoku taking the win with the Druid. And against Zoo. Against Zoo, yeah, which is probably something that handsome guy didn't really expect. And you always have to factor that in, though, uh, just because... Druid is a deck that you you can always expect to take wins against anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you can't really build your lineup too much around Druid. Yep. You can to make it a little bit better, but you can't completely counter it. Definitely. Like you, you can't predict what your opponent will do if he has access to Innovate and yep. Wildgrove. I mean, Wildgrove is more predictable, but sometimes when you just see double Innovate turn one with Coin Emperor, and you're just like... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what can I do, right? Exactly. What are you supposed to do in those types of situations? But uh, we'll see what these guys decide to choose uh, next. I uh, can't remember the, next the classes, X. though. Uh, I think there was a warrior from Tensaku. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll have to see in a second. Yeah, there's the crowd, though. Well met. It cooled off slightly, but it's still very hot there. You can see them. It's not around. raining anymore. Oh, hello. Hello, guy in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really hot, like... Guys in, in Europe watching this, imagine this is 34 degrees. Yeah. And you're just, you know, now watching from Sweden, where it's like 10, 15 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Still, though, that just shows how much passion these guys have to sit through this weather and, uh, you know, play and watch some, some Hearthstone. And you can see there, this the player area cleared a little bit because uh, some of the matches uh, were finishing up, so... Um, yeah, just waiting on game number two of Tansoku versus versus handsome guy. And the reason why would you think so hard about about picking a deck? Right mm -hmm. now? Yeah, we'll see. And that's us from the different angle. Yeah. Hello. And we're going into the second match. Wow, that will forgot a torch and a power blast. Yeah, is this a freeze mage? I believe it is. It is a freeze mage with. Double Forgotten Torches, which I like the card, but sometimes it feels like Double Forgotten Torches is just yep. too much. Yeah, this is uh, uh, this is one of the decks that Handsome Guy did play in, I believe, if I remember correctly, in the Asian Pacific Winter Championships. And uh, the deck in itself uh, is a player named, uh, a streamer, popular Freeze Mage player named Laughing, mm -hmm. who plays a Double Torch variant of Freeze Mage. Does not run uh, Archimedes Antonidas. It does not run... Uh, anti heal bot basically it runs more reliable burn with you know the two forgotten torches mm -hmm. um, and it, it's sort of a, a faster paced freeze mage deck you, you don't have a linear win condition in the fact that you get extra fireballs with Antonidas, you play Alex Straza and you kill your opponent it's more of like sometimes you don't even need to play Alex Straza. you can just burn your opponent down uh, if you realize that win condition early enough uh, in the without even having to use the, the Alex Strauss to bring your opponent to 15, so it's an yeah, interesting deck, point. to say the least. Okay, and now let's see how this will pan out against a Dark Moon Warlock. So it might be Reno Jackson or the combo version, right? Yeah. With Arkham Golems, maybe? Yeah. Oh! oh. Okay. Hello! Well, we didn't see that for a long time. Yeah. So uh, it still looks like it's going to be a Reno lock, but just with the, the combo variation w in a single Molten Giant. Uh, it could be just a, you know, the, the combo, the regular combo warlock, like you mentioned, but uh, especially with the mind control tech, it's yeah, it seeming like more Reno. likely Reno, yeah. All right, well, this matchup is actually pretty tough. So uh, as a Freeze Mage player, you want to try and pressure uh, your opponent. Uh, the, the Reno Warlock player and try and get them to use their heals and their Reno before you use your Alexstrasza. And uh, it, it's a little bit tougher for this variation of Freeze Mage because they do have a finite amount of damage. Uh, yep. if, you, if you don't factor in, you know, like pings and stuff like that, being able to do technically in some scenarios infinite damage, they, they don't have Antonitis to generate more burn. So it's really tough. But as you mentioned, two Forgotten Tortures add, adds up basically 12 damage. But the problem is it 
adds up the damage available in your deck and not in your hand. Yeah. And that's a huge deal. Yeah. So now, um, tough decision for handsome guy, I would say. Do you want to just play Thanos on board and nothing else? Doesn't seem to be a great play. You hmm. have double frost balls, so you want to keep that uh, Thanos for those combinations. He has to be pl uh, he has to play uh, Ice Lances in this deck, right? Yes. There's yes, a lot of does. verse if he draws like even one Ice Lance. Yeah. Yeah, Ice Lance is just a versatile card, you know, in itself. Oh. Three, six, nine cards. Yeah, that's a perfect object. But he goes for the Doomsayer instead. Interesting. Yeah. Whoa. Interesting because I thought maybe you should uh, keep the Doomsayer for the turn when you play Blizzard or Frost Nova. Mm -hmm. Your opponent is not pressuring you, like, you know, s like with a big minion. It's only a 4 6. One minion board. Probably not gonna happen um, that your opponent has um, a Doom Guard on turn 5. Yeah. He does have a way to deal with the Doomsayer, though, with the Iron Beak Owl. Also, a much, much dirtier way to deal with it, with the power overwhelming. Don't uh, recommend that one. Yeah, because then your uh, then your Twilight Ray becomes a full one. If you silence it, you can play PO. Oh yeah, I, I was I wasn't even saying if he wanted to hold on to the owl for something <laughs> later, he could have just killed off his Drake, which would have effectively wasted the power overwhelming because the Drake would have died anyway. Yeah, but you are built on the Fury Free, right? Your board is being expanded Bingo. by one one minion. Probably not um, a good investment anyway. Yeah. I'd think not. Hmm. Five mana. Uh, now it's actually nine damage, which is starting to be relevant. Yeah. No access to AoE effect. Iceberg heals for 8, so basically stops at 1 turn from attacking. Path, uh, sorry, a loot hoarder will give you access to more cards. I would say probably Ice Barrier and Loot Hoarder. Because you don't want to put that Fireballs now into the deck. You yeah. need access to First Novas, fr mm, Mad, Mad Scientist. You need... Um, what else do you need? Emperor. If that, if that even plays Emperor. I'm yeah, sure. usually plays Emperor. Sometimes it's cut, but it's rare. But does decide to go for the Forgotten Torch. Like you said, that will make it so he has a more likely chance to draw the Roaring Torch. But there's another Forgotten Torch. Yeah. Hmm. So Lothab is a good tool, uh, usually later in the game, to protect a strong board. A lot of players just tend to like playing it, you know, as a strong tempo play against Freeze Mage, just to lock out AoE and things of that nature, but... Um, especially in this matchup, sometimes it can be pretty crucial to make sure that you hold on to a strong board for at least mm -hmm. one more turn. And Lothab helps you do that. Yep. Or just deny the second ice block. Yeah, exactly. I like Defender Vargas here. Puts a lot of pressure on board. It's uh, way more reliable than the Void Color right now. Yeah. Because it adds two damage this turn and two damage next turn. So it's still better than Void Color with one turn of attacking. Also protects the Iron Big Owl from being able to be pinged off as well yep. the following turn. So the ping is not that bad because then you know your opponent will have only access to 4 mana instead yeah. of 6. Which is not bad because then you play around an Emperor and if your opponent will play Emperor then your Owl still lives. And another thing is that you probably want to wait with the Void Color just to the moment you draw the Demon. Mm. To just get that Death Rattle going on. Three, six, nine cards in hand and access to six mana. But still no AoE. And since he did expend that one Doomsayer early on, there's not even anything to supplement that AoE, AoE yep. in order to clear the board. So a Handsome Guy here e either has to decide on you know clearing one creature off the board, maybe throwing that Fireball at the Twilight Drake, or trying to draw into his deck, understand that he's going to take a little bit more damage in doing so, but try and get closer to those much needed AoE spells and he's taking a lot of pressure and th those burn spells are actually really important just because Arena Warlock has so much healing potential you know if we're correct and uh, we did read this right but you know as far as we can tell this is Arena Warlock he didn't show any kind of duplicates yet uh, to his opponents or his opponent might still think it's a handlock like the classical version but probably no 
probably won't, because uh, Reno Jackson Warlocks are being more played right now. Mm. Often played right now. Yeah. So the Ice Barrier is going to be almost negated by the 7 damage that's being thrown in. And will Tan Soka decide to throw out the Lothab? It looks not. He doesn't have any other demons available to him in his hand at the moment. So That's a bluff. Yeah, but of course, bluff, bluffing is very important, especially with that card. There's a Frost Nova. Kind of late. But no Doomsayer. And even if he picks it up with the Arcane Intellect, he can't use both. Roaring Torch. He's got a lot of burn. Yep, that was the Roaring Torch, and that's a problem because you probably wanted to see something else. Wait, can he actually start burning his opponent? If he fireballs face his turn, he'll put him down to 20. 20, yes. Then next turn, uh, you have Frost Nova to stop the bleeding. Roaring Torch plus a Frostbolt, or you can set up the Blood Mage Thaunos and play... Roaring Torch or Frostbolt Ice Lance. Uh, let's count. So Fireball this turn, you are 20. Uh, next turn you have access to 8 mana, so you Frost Nova the board so you can't be attacked by anything. And then you have access to 5 mana, which might be, in example, Foul Nose into Roaring Torch or just Roaring Torch pink. Probably Foul Nose Roaring Torch is better because then it's easy at 16 and you have 4, 8. 13 damage with the double Frostbolt and Ice Lances. Yeah. Oh. No so, mind. does draw the Antique Heal Bob, which is going to stop the bleeding. Uh, but this is one of the things that this type of Freeze Mage deck makes possible. That, you know, the standard Freeze Mage list with Archmage Antonitis uh, doesn't allow. A lot of times you, you can't just afford on turn 7 to just throw a Fireball at the face and ha hope to have enough burn. Yep. To to finish your opponent. But this deck does. It does have that. And sometimes it's just a winning play. Yeah. You, you can't play to lose. Just, I mean, sorry. You can't play to survive because then you probably will lose anyway the game. Yeah. So very important decision to be made by the high tier level players is to, should I just make the risky decision but play to win the game in the long term? Or just avoid a worst case scenario and play to survive the game. Yeah. And usually the correct decision is just to go be the aggressor, yeah. ask the question and demand an answer from your opponent, then the other way around. Play to win, don't play not to lose. And uh, a lot of times, like you said, yeah, it's a good point. Forcing your opponent to have answers. All right, well, this changes things a little bit. Uh, Tansoku, you know, thought about playing the heal bot, but realized there's actually no need. Yeah. Uh, there's He's not going to die from this, yeah. most likely, right? Uh, I believe well, it would be impossible without Emperor Thorsin to kill, to do 18 damage on turn wait, 8. Wait, wait, wait. two Frostbolts, two Ice Lances. Four, eight. Oh, that's exactly That's 18. exactly 18. But he'd have to have exactly that. Five cards. Five cards. And he almost has that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, four. So what do you think about this turn? Frost Nova? Ice Barrier. Oh, oh it's my. the next card. Oh, my goodness. Risky play from Tansoku. Almost gets punished. One card away from exact lethal. But it was a very unlikely scenario, to be fair. Handsome Guy had drawn very little cards at that point. Uh, very little extra cards. Yep. So Frost Nova Doomsayer this time. Yeah. And Handsome Guy does have quite a bit of damage still left in his hand. 18 with that combination that we talked about. Plus an additional at least 6 from the Roaring Torch. Could be 7 if the Thanos survives an additional turn, which would be 25 total damage. Mm -hmm. Factor in some pings. He might be able to get Tansoku to play that healing before the Alex Alexstrasza is played, which is a big deal. I don't see how an easy way out of this. Ooh. You have to use the anti kill bot and probably tap. Tap anti kill bot, yeah. Yeah. And that's about it because you don't want to play more minions unless he plays. No, no, he already played one silence, right? Played his owl, yeah. There's a possibility of a spell breaker, very unlikely. Alright. Oh. 
He goes if 24. If he doesn't play the anti-heal bot, that is incredibly risky. All right. Lothab effectively does the same thing. It's just the body is a lot stronger than anti-kill bot in the long run. So it's not going to stick around. It is going to die. This hmm. Well, he, want, he wanted to play around the ice barrier. Uh, sorry, ice block. So if, if um, handsome guy would have played anything, and that anything probably would have been a Iceland. Uh, sorry, oh God, ice block. Then he can't develop anything else. So Tensoku can take advantage of of the Doctor Boom and Belcher, an example, or Doctor Boom and Hillbot, an example, which is awesome. All right. Well, this is a tough turn from Handsome Guy. He can try and you know play around the combo by playing just Ice Barrier, or he can make the aggressive play. And just roaring torch face and hope he can kill his opponent next turn. But if he has Reno, then he's dead. So it's, it's a tough call to make. And Tansoku actually didn't have lethal potential there. Because he doesn't have a charger yet. So, Dr. Boom and Hibot? I think so. Yeah. Really strong plays. And Tansoku is starting to apply a little bit more pressure. We're getting close to the uh, final turns, it feels. But that can be deceptive when you're watching a freeze mage. Another fireball picked up. That's so much damage. Wow. So much damage. And what do you do with so much damage? You throw it at the face. Or you clear Dr. Boom with it. You have 17 health available with the ice barrier. And your opponent has 9, 12, 15. And the bombs. Hmm. This is not a good situation for handsome guy. No, not at all. So what about if you use the ice lances? I mean one ice lens to block the um, Dr. Boom. You have nine mana left, so you can play Alexstrasza and just finish your opponent with Frostbolt, Frostbolt. No, that's not enough. Damn. Wait, it's exactly enough. You can play Thanos, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, Frostnova, Roaring Torch. If you had a Frost Nova. No, you don't need to Frost Nova. Oh. Because you you can use just Iceland here as a, uh, as a way of stopping Dr. Boom from attacking for one turn. Yeah. Huh. Well, this is also a pretty creative play. Frost Bolt is own mad scientist, able to fit in a ping. So with Blood Mage Thanos next turn, uh, that's way more than enough damage. Be able to close out the game because it's 14 with the Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. It'd be mm -hmm. 21 with the Roaring Torch. Couldn't fit into ping with all that, but 21 is a lot of damage. And no Reno picked up from Tansoku. The only thing he could do here is Siphon Soul. And a Siphon Soul actually wouldn't even be enough hmm. to heal himself out of range of the potential damage next turn from Handsome Guy. Wait, wait. Is he. That's 4, 14. That's 19 damage next turn. He's one of lethal if the Siphon Soul will be played this turn. Uh, no, he has. Doesn't he have 23 damage? Well, it's Frostbolt, 4 damage, right? Double yep. Ice Lances. I mean, with Thanos. Yeah, double Ice Lance is 14, plus Roaring Torch would be 21 damage. Oh, that's Roaring Torch. Never mind. I thought it's uh, Forgotten Torch. Yeah. So he is going to Siphon Soul, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Oops. That was a mistake. Yeah. I don't know what was a mistake. Well, it didn't change anything because... Um, yeah. The Boombot would have still hit Deal into damage in the, in the turn yeah. he was playing. Yeah. So there was no difference. Yeah. Uh, but this is going to be lethal for Handsome Guy. So he's going to tie up the series one to one with some fantastic... Freeze Mage versus Reno Warlock play. That I really liked how Handsome Guy played. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, different decisions to be made. And um, I'm not that experienced freeze, uh, freeze Mage player, especially with double Roaring Torches. Yeah. So um, cool to see those decisions made by Handsome Guy. I really liked the, 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 way of he, the way he played, especially when he switched the gear. Right? Yeah. When he started to be aggressive, when uh, his opponent was at 26. He used the fireball just to the face to put it on 20, and then he, he set up the lethal 
always was setting up the lethal in their pumping turn. Yeah. Definitely a finesse matchup, I think, that one is. Um, a lot of times, uh, a handsome guy also did a really good job of, you know, playing around the potential uh, of Reno Jackson uh, by holding on to the Alex Straza, you know, never playing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what you have to do in that matchup because if you play Alex Straza and then use some of your burn, Reno Jackson will completely shut you out of the game. So definitely a well-played matchup. And now it's tied up one-to-one. -one. Both players have Warlock remaining, and Handsome Guy has a Druid. And Tensoku has a Rogue, which is an interesting choice. And there's another Rogue player on the screen there, Staz, who brought Rogue to the Asia-Pacific Winter Championship himself. I really hope that someone will bring the um, Mill Rogue to the tournament. It's really such a cool and sweet deck. The problem is it will rotate out of, stand out of standard, most likely. Yeah. And it's not really top tier, so that's yeah. good. That's Chalk holding a Chalk head <laughs> up to his head. A Rogue is being picked up by Tansoku against the Druid. Now this is a matchup where Tansoku will probably have to be have different mindset than usual. Yeah. Because you want to use as many minions as possible in the beginning of the game. So yeah. keeping the agent, especially when on coin, and Tomb Builder feels natural. And I would basically from Morgan away uh, the Blade Flurry and the preparation as yeah. well. But I'm really surprised that he didn't keep the, the agent. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit surprised, but also I understand his reasoning. Um, he, al he already has a reasonable sized creature, and that's the Tomb Pillager to play um, in, in those early turns. And SI Agent doesn't line up very well against anything. But it's still a free free minion that um, deals damage and makes a really uncomfortable turn for the Druid player. Yeah. Because you can play a Pilot Shredder into that, yeah. most likely. This is why I liked it. Yeah. Keeping the backstab, probably the correct decision here, just in case you will draw an agent next turn, so you can play backstab and agent to do four damage. All right, well, a sick curve developing here for Handsome Guy. Shade into the piloted shredder uh, next turn. Needs to pick up something to fill that five drop void, but uh, with so many powerful cards in that five slot in the Druid deck, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And Tomb Pillager, though, is a pretty scary creature. Might have to uh, expend a swipe if he doesn't want to take that extra five damage. But that gives a little bit of initiative over to Tunsoku. You still have the shade on the board. Well, the five damage is not that important right now. Yeah. I'll probably just play the Palta Shredder and skip the turn. Yeah. With, with not attacking. Yeah. He realizes that also uh, he doesn't have a turn five play. So if he has to swipe next turn, then so be it. A sap. Hmm. Well, sap. Is, there are two, two two good targets in the sap. Druid of the Claw, basically free. Druid yeah. of the Claw, Sludge Belcher, which is not being always played um, in in uh, in current trades, and the Sludge Belcher, right? Yeah. So, piloted Shredder, uh, getting sap back, and having used the prep as well. But that's one of the reasons why Tomb Pillager is such a strong card. The double coin from the two Tomb Pillagers on the board will eventually uh, almost replace. The, the preparation that he used to, to make that sap, so. And the one coin that he actually used for the Tomb Pillager that was played in turn three. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a card that sort of replaces uh, a lot of the cards that you have to expend to protect it on the board, which you sort of double down on it, which makes it a really powerful card. Mm -hmm. And thanks. No. Now it's not an easy decision for a handsome guy. I'll probably just replay the Palta Shredder. Because it can bait out the attack from your opponent to kill it and then trade maybe with the 5-4 unless he has an access to backstab. Yeah. Especially with the Azure Drake or yeah. Falnos. This is like devastating because you probably will lose anything that will uh, come out out of the Pulse Shredder unless it's a uh, Menhouse Vanna Storm or um, Totem Golem. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll see what he goes with. Yeah, Power Shredder seems like what would fight for the board the most, but... Azure Drake backstabs pretty strong. So I've heard. Another sap. Huh. I would say backstab would be still better. Yeah. Backstab. We kills the first stage. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. That, that does change a lot. That, yeah. This means that a swipe next turn 
will clear the board completely. Uh, but again, gives a, would have to give up board initiative to do so, because with the extra two mana, it is hero power. But resetting a board of a rogue can actually be pretty devastating, just because a lot of times they, uh, the deck is so spell heavy. The likelihood that they have uh, a minion left in those five cards remaining would be a lot lower than some decks. Let's see. What are, what are the options right now? Do you maybe just play Emperor and deal one damage to the face with this sheep and that's just ignore everything? That's it's possible, but then you're taking not potential. I mean, there's a potential lethal the following turn. That's true. Do you um, want to risk that? Probably yeah. Not. Uh, you could tell, handsome guy. Very tough decision here. Weighing out all the options. Um, you know, the, the lethal would be pretty unlikely, but you know that your opponent has a coin to activate any combo spells. Even double eviscerate would be 19 damage total the following turn. And, oh, this is, wow, this is, I actually like this play a lot more than the swipe because you're developing a board, you're still using the same amount of resources. The only thing is you're just taking a little bit more damage, so bringing yourself down to 18. So uh, definitely a, a solid spot here. From handsome guy. Keeper's not, not a good target to be uh, sapped. Or eviscerated, really. Hmm. Does anti kill bot? I think so. <laughs> anti kill bot and maybe coin dagger to set up a top deck devil. Um, devil. Yeah. Poison. Um, to set up a poison or a oil. Yeah. <laughs> Could have also daggered first, attacked into the Keeper of the Grove. And then coined out the Antigua bot to get full value out of it. And have it contest the Keeper of the Grove by itself. That's true. But I don't. Preemptively attacking like that's a, you know, a tough play, especially if you are going to utilize that coin. You want it to be setting up for something. Like you said, setting up for the oil. Uh, and if you get rid of one of the durability of your dagger, then you're sort of. Giving up the yeah. damage you can dish yeah. out with the blade flurry. Exactly. So hmm. let's see if if he will top deck a poison next turn, it it will actually be a huge difference. Uh, for um, for uh, because he didn't play the coin last turn and the rogue hero power, but that's not the case. And now it looks like the sap will have oh. a target. Wow! So he's got a potential nine mana total this turn with the double coin. So he could Violet Teacher, Double Coin, Fan of Knives, trade into the Keeper of the Grove, and eviscerate the Emperor Thorsand for a full clear in developing a full board of 1-1s. One I don't think um, eviscerating the Emperor is a correct move in here because you want to keep the eviscerate um, just to finish up the game, you know? Yeah, that's so a good point. Look, look, look at that. Druid is at 18. If your healbot deals free damage to the face, Setup is at 15, right? Then you have Eviscerate for at least 4, which is basically 11. It's not that far away from killing your opponent, and you still have tempo uh, by playing the the zero mana prepared, uh, pr prepared uh, spell, which would be, in my case, sap. Hmm. It seemed like Tensoku changed his his plays throughout the uh, throughout the turn there. I like the fan first, regardless, just because um, you want to open up your your options. Giving up the 1-1 one -one from the uh, Violet Teacher is not that big of a deal, especially since it's super vulnerable to swipe. Uh, but then he sort of like changed a lot of his plays. I like your reasoning with saving the Eviscerate, because you need that for burn damage. Um, maybe he was thinking that Emperor Thorsen is not the best target to sap, just because you play it again, you get value, but it's all about the tempo. It's not necessarily about the value. Yeah, it's just two mana for six mana in this situation when you're pressuring your opponent. So he can't really allow you uh, yeah. to attack again. And playing the Emperor again is basically allowing you to yeah. at attack. And now he's virtually in the same spot that he would have been in, except now he's down in Eviscerate. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be hard for Tensoku to piece together the damage to fight this, especially since look at... Look at that hand. It's just so many powerful drops for Handsome Guy. And he also has the Force of Nature. So as soon as he picks up a Savage Roar, this game's going to speed out of control very quickly. Probably just end the game. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. There's one. There's also a Dr. Boom. 
Uh, well, he has inner fate for Druid the Claw, charge it in. The opponent is, is at 22. He doesn't have a good way of dealing with that. You already saw two saps, one eviscerate, and the only problem will be a four damage blade flurry. But that's about it. And if he's keeping track, he knows that two of the cards in Tensoku's hand are coins. Yep. Definitely. And since he just went ahead and hero powered attack face and pass last turn, that sort of gives him an idea of what the type of hand is. It's spell heavy and maybe not even any oils. Uh, but uh, handsome guy, he's going to think through the turn here. It is a very important turn. You don't want to give your opponent any chance of coming into, coming back into a pretty much one game already. Oh, oh that's why he held onto the coins. Okay. So here we go. But will that be enough? I don't know. He does have backstab as well. Both preps have been used, so he can't sort of cheat out. And there's a Malagos. Hmm. Malagos is definitely not enough. Well, backstab first, right? See what you get. Might be a deadly poison. Yeah. Yep. Sheep. Yeah. Shiv does not allow Tensoku to clear off the Ancient uh, of War. It's not easy. Yeah. Ancient of Lore, sorry. So he can pick up... No, there's, I don't think there's really anything that he can pick up. Oh, there we go. But it's still... It's not enough. It's not enough, but you will clear yeah. the Druid of the Claw and... Just attack phase for one damage, yeah. so you can deal six damage next turn. But the, the game's just over with combo because he's got the eight mana combo, so he can fit in a hero power. So twenty one damage. Well, he doesn't know that, right? So yeah, he's he's got to suspect it though. At Probably. that point, especially after the emperor turn, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I definitely liked how he navigated that play, um, and you know, sort of threw me for a curveball there. I, I had a suspicion that it was Malagos, but it's never confirmed until you see the gadgets in Auctioneer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's never fully confirmed until you see the actual Malagos. Yeah, that's true. But well, if you see a Shiv, Shiv, yeah, yeah. Then you probably know, right? Or like a Sinister Strike. Sometimes there's a one-up Sinister Strike in Malagos uh, Rogue decks, but uh, that's going to be Handsome Guy taking a two-to-one lead in the series. Uh, just a Warlock win away from, from so taking it. We didn't see the Warlock yet. Uh, or did we? We did. It was Zoo. We saw Zoo Mirror. Yes. Zoo Mirror. Uh, in, in game number game. one. Yeah. Yeah. So for um, Tensoku, he'll probably stick to his rogue. It should be okay ish against the Zoo because you have backstabs, you have Fan of Knives, you have Blade Flurry, so a lot of weapons, of ar I mean, array of weapons yeah. when it comes to uh, clearing the board. So I would suspect him just sticking, uh, sticking to the rogue, which we'll see in a second. Uh, he has the Warlock as well in the arsenal. Did that switch anything here? Oh, no. we didn't see the mirror. Oh, maybe I was mistaken. Oh yeah, it was the Druid. He played yeah, the yeah, Druid, Druid against, against the Zoo Warlock yes. earlier, yeah. That's what it was. So, uh, Tinsuka's got a decent matchup, followed by a mirror matchup. Left probably a mirror. Probably a mirror, judging by the rest of his deck. Or the rest of his deck lineup, so... Uh, still a good chance for him to come back into this into the series and potentially find a victory. Handsome guy is looking at a decent hand to start things off. It's not bad. You have one, two, three, and you're going first, so why not keep all of them? Especially when Brand Bronze Beard is such a huge impact card that if your opponent will leave it on board, then you can just, you know, turn four the hand of Argus yeah. at plus four HP and plus four attack on, on the board is insane. A coin agent for the flamen is perfect. Yeah. But it's going to do three damage to him, but pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Definitely a great pickup, though. Especially since it won't even contest. Uh, the Dark Petal won't even contest the SI agent once it comes down and kills off the flame him. So, mm. oh, but Elven Archer will definitely help in doing so. <laughs> Brand Bronze Beard Elven Archer is one of my favorite plays to make in the game. <laughs> Multi shot. Yeah, it's legitimately overpowered. One mana for a 1 1 that deals a 2 damage battle cry? Are you kidding me, Lothar? I would play that in uh, Hunter. 
Yeah. I think everybody would. Some people for a while that were actually playing Elven Archer in Hunter. Well, that was a brief moment in the history of Hearthstone. <laughs> I think there's been a brief moment in the history of Hearthstone where just about every card's been played in some deck or another. <laughs> well, Shield Bear was once a top tier card. Yeah. There's the Blade Flurry, but there's no uh, upgrade to the weapon yet. And it's actually the second Blade Flurry, so not that important. Yeah, having For both Blade Flurries is actually really rough. Well, if you have two poisons, you can plan out and bait out more minions for the second clear, right? Yeah, without Which poisons, I meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you fan here? Or do you just attack oh, with the dagger? Really or just dagger up, I mean. It's really unfortunate. I think it's on dagger up. Yeah. Very rough turn. Tomb Pillager will help to contest next turn. It'll also grab a coin that can be used with the Gadget and Auctioneer. Uh, but those are both still a couple turns away. Look at that, what will happen. <laughs> if there will be no uh, Eviscerate or Sap for Tansaku, next turn, Gormok will deal 4 damage. Uh, sorry, 8 damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Wow! Oh, it feels so good! 2 damage from the, from the Elven Archer. Well, that sucks, but Tansaku is gonna get wrecked if he will not use the Fan of Knives here. Yeah. Or the Blade Flurry. <sighs> Ooh, no preparation, right? Because he's going greedy for the Agazetan. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, the Gormok is just disgusting. Lines up perfectly. And uh, the scores on the left hand side, I believe, are incorrect, as Handsome Guy did win the previous match. Win the right? previous game. So, so he, he's, he's fighting for win the match in yeah. general. Yeah. So this is match point for Handsome Guy. Tensoku still has two decks left to win with. Ah, the 8 damage to the face is so tempting. I think you have to go for it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Oh, double speared. Wow. He took a spear to the knee. Yeah, and that puts him at 5. So that means if there is no heal or taunt, but you know this deck it doesn't run a taunt, then Handsome Guy will win even if the board is fully cleared on the side of Tansoku. Yep. Well, probably that's um, Fan of Nice, Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry. So you clean up the board. You deal 6 damage to the face because you will need a Tomb Pillager to attack into the Void Walker, most likely. Well, is it actually worth it? No, it's not. You can just Whirlwind. Sorry, Blade Flurry. Uh, yeah. Without attacking with the weapon. I get f uh, 8 damage to the face total. So, uh, he, he's going to think that he's... A little bit safe, but wow, that Elven Archer damage plus that Gormok damage really adds up. Yeah, without the second battle cry from Elven Archer, that wouldn't be lethal next time. Yeah! Elven Archer is the MVP of this game. Forget about Bran. Yeah, Bran is not important. Yeah. You just play double Elven Archers. Yeah. All right. Well, And double Gormoks. And double <laughs> yeah. Kappa. That deserves a Kappa face. But with that, that's going to be Handsome Guy with the Doom Guard. 10 6. Casual win by Zoom. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> casual. Yeah. Well played thrown out from Tensoku. And <laughs> there we go. There he is. <laughs> and uh, that's Handsome Guy taking the match and moving on to the round of 16 in the winner's bracket. Moving up further. So that was a free one result. Yeah. But it was quite quick, anyway. Yeah. Right, the exciting match was between the mage and the warlock. Yeah. That was a really exciting match and uh, well played by handsome guy. Yeah. Uh, so props to him. Yeah, really well played. Yep. And uh, of course, Hensoku is is not out of it yet. Again, this was another winner's bracket match, so he will fall down, uh, to, I believe, to the round of 16 in the lower bracket. So uh, he'll be yep. fighting off uh, uh, later today. We might show his match on stream. We might not, since there's a lot of matches uh, to get through, and some of them will uh, have to happen. Well, we have stream. eight matches uh, on stream and rest of the matches off stream. Off stream, yeah. yeah. So uh, there you go. One more recap of the match there. Handsome guy once again moving on. Uh, you know, really good. Like you, you called it his, his sort of winning streak. He didn't win the Asia Pacific Winter Championship, but he did come in second, which is a very impressive performance and continuing that dominance. I think it's important to put uh, the emphasis on the top finishers, not on the winners. Yeah. 
because that's what matters in card games consistency yeah. consistency in top finishes top eight yeah. top four top two you know that's that's what matters and i think that was kind of overlooked in the beginning of the hearthstone when everyone was just you know just looking at the winner of the tournament and everyone else was like kind of you know just yeah. ignored yeah. and that kind of bugs me personally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it it irks a lot of people but uh, handsome guy is uh, he's all about consistency. I mentioned it before. He he qualified for the Asia Pacific Winter Championship by uh, making it uh, by mo most points, uh, having the most points in the entire Asia Pacific region. So that means he has consistent ladder finishes and, of course, those consistent tournament finishes. But we are going to have to go to a quick break. But when we come back, we are going to head over to the lower bracket. So we will be going on with the elimination matches. So the do or die situations. But don't go anywhere, guys. More Hearthstone Singapore major action will continue right after this.